today we are going to do a back spring with the tutorial. Hey, come on, Migos! First, you want to stretch. Okay? Normally, I do is do this. Just make sure you're prepared physically before doing your back hand swings. First, practice squatting down like you're sitting in a chair and... Okay, practice this. Put your arms up and then bend and then jump back. Okay? Do that ten times. Or you could do seven. It's almost like sitting in a chair. You can get a good spring with a seated start, but don't go too low or you may not be able to keep your head off of the ground. You'll find that sweet spot in time. You can go down a little further than alley when you are starting out. Make sure to have mats or something soft in case you hit your head. We all remember these from gym class and gymnastics. It was sitting so down, painful. that's too low. This is too high. You gotta find your perfect medium, right? No, that's wrong. <laughs> you have to have your feet straight like this. You have to do this. Make no, I know. I'm talking about for the back handspring. You don't want to go too low, and you don't want to go too high. You go like this so much. Okay. And now you are going to make sure that your parent spots you with your right hand near your thigh, and your left hand, you're in your back, okay? This is your right hand and that's your left hand. Like this. <laughs> uh, but we're going to do this way. Ready? Oh, well now you're, okay. This She's is not the way I normally stop. Right hand on her so my side. And her, no. Oh, she's going to put her <laughs> right hand on her my back and her left hand on my Twist side. Twist and right here. And then you were going to spot and jump backwards first. Okay, you scare me. And then you were going to squat and your parent is going to do all the work. She's going to do that. And you can bend your legs. But then, how to um, straighten your legs is this. First, do some splits. But what you want to do is you want to get the move down. And pass. You might look a little froggy at first with some bent legs, maybe spread apart. But you work harder and get those legs together and those knees straighter. And then You'll get it. She does that again. I do that. I, she does that again. And then she's going to do all the work again. And we're just going to put our legs straight. Do all the work. Okay. That was a heavy spot. There's a heavy spot, a medium spot, a light spot, a barely there at all just for like confidence because you get mental blocks, especially when flipping backwards, for me anyway, for sure. Hurry up! <laughs> mental blocks can take a while to work through, but as long as you don't give up, you'll break those blocks down soon enough. How are you going to do a heavy, heavy spot? Heavy spot. Okay, heavy spot is where you're holding a lot weight. of weight. And you need somebody strong to do this. Don't try to take somebody your own age and have them do that. Once you get better, a medium spot, you still have the hands in both places, but you can be a little more relaxed. They're doing more of the work. Then, a light spot is... That they don't really touch you. And... Now, you could do straight legs. I can do... A back spot. Now first your legs might be bent up and looking froggy, 
But after you get it, then you perfect the look of everything, right? And now I'm going to show you. Show them a froggy one. Show them like legs apart. Also, sticky toes is great for this. So <laughs> you don't have to go that far, but. Okay, well, you don't want to land on your knees okay. either, but, but you might have to do that because at first they did too. Yeah, that's like bad technique, but you polish it as one. you go along. I thought this is a good one. Nice legs, straight together. That's what you want. You want your feet to be straight together and you want to oh. keep them together the whole way through. Later on, after you have it down pat, you can use a band to keep your legs together, but not yet. You don't want to do that until you're ready to perfect your form. Okay, so here are a couple moves you want to have before you even attempt your back handspring. Go ahead, Al. First, we're going to do some back walkovers. I think it's very easy to me, but it's, I guess it's hard to do. Well, it's hard for some people. <laughs> yeah. And it was hard for you in the beginning. But when you don't give up, you get it. Some people might think a back limber is harder than a back yeah. handspring. It depends on what your strength is. If you have a lot of leg power, then the back handspring might be easier to you. But if you know, if you're flexible and you have other things, maybe a back limber might be easier for you. It depends. Or a front limber. Right. But you you should at least have the back walkover nailed first. And now you're going to try your back handspring by yourself. Okay. Remember, arms up, arms you up. sit in the seat. Sit in the seat, go back, your legs are foggy first, and then you move on to the middle, and then... Swinging the arms behind you quickly and then up to your ears, parallel to your ears, your arms will be parallel, helps you get more power and speed to propel you to your perfect back handspring. One of the most important things to remember when learning your back handspring is you're not jumping for height you're jumping for distance so you're trying to propel your body more towards the wall you're going to go up a bit but you're going to go out towards the wall instead of up towards the ceiling which would be what you do for a back tuck so it's distance it's going out instead of trying to go straight up into the air so keep note of that Allie likes to lean forward a nice amount before going backwards. Your body may not go as far forward as her. Everybody's different. You want to lean forward a bit though, and again, in time, you'll find your own sweet spot for you. Eventually, you could do this. When done in a series, you would not re-swing your arms back a second time for another back handspring. However, this would be your first step. The girls always did a round off, swang up and went to another back handspring in the beginning when they were learning. Eventually, you get the strength to easily connect all of your skills without a break and a re-swing. Building power is what matters most there. She doesn't have room for that here, obviously, in the small living room. But that's what your goal is. And beginners, please know if you do have access to an incline mat, it's very helpful because the angle of it helps you not have to do as much work to propel your body over into the back handspring, and it's a great learning tool and or if you have access to a trampoline that helps you get a lot more spring and you'll be able to learn your tricks faster that way too so if you're lucky enough to have that do use those first if you don't have access to either of these and you happen to live in a backyard like I did that had a slight incline put your mat down that way 
and that will give you a little bit of help. Back in my day, we didn't have any mats available for us, so I would put a pillow under my head so that when I hit down, I didn't smash my head because I was doing that time and time again, and I'm sure that's why I can't remember some things now. So put that pillow down, make sure it's narrow enough that your hands are not going to be on that and that it's just enough for your head to fit through. I hope you get it too. You will if you keep trying. But like, subscribe, and cheer. Bye!